we wanted to have really brief introductions of who we are and then who all of you are. Um, there's a lot of people in the room, so maybe we can just do it really quickly. Um, who you are, where you're from, and then maybe something brief about what you want to get out of us being here. But we're hoping that this only lasts about um, 15 to 20 minutes, so hopefully we can go through this quickly. So just very brief introductions. Um, Brian, do you want to start? Uh, I'm Brian, I'm from Syracuse. Um, ben, I'm from Syracuse. Uh, and I think our big question today is how to engage more youth in the peace movement, how to reach out to them, how to speak to them, how to get them involved. I'm Rachel, I'm from Syracuse. I'm Amelia, I'm from Syracuse, and I guess what I'd like to get out of this workshop is some connection with other you know, youth organizers from other places. I'm Claire, and I'm from Syracuse. Sorry. Okay. I'll start out with you. Uh, I'm Max, I'm from Binghamton. Um, it's good to just be connected to the community and get to know other people involved. I'm Alicia, I'm from Manhattan, and I'm here to learn about how other student organizers do their student organizing. Uh, I'm Mike from Ithaca, and I'm here to make connections with some other people. Odelia from Ithaca. Andrea from Ithaca, interested in uh, learning about how to build relationships with uh, people who are not in the room at the moment. Uh, Poco from Ithaca, and um, I think that here's the lifeblood. Kwame from New York, and now I live in Albany, and I'm getting very invigorated by being around so many of you, and I'm glad you're not discriminating against me because of you. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for being here. That's wisdom here. I don't know, I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Rouge from uh, DC, um, and I'm here to connect and build relationships. I'm Eric, I'm from Brooklyn. Mm, me too. I'm Christopher from Buffalo, New York, and I would like to, well, I would like to get out of the meeting is uh, get more information and and uh, more input to, as to how, how to better reach the <coughs> the young people through so, not conventional um, archaic media, but through uh, social networking like Twitter and Facebook and such. Uh, I'm Abby from <coughs> Peace Action Genesia. Woo! Woo yeah. I'm Don from Syracuse. I'm working with the Peace Council. I'm here to learn. You, wanna, you guys want to go? I'm Dave, and I used to be from Brooklyn. <laughs> I'm here to work, let's say, intergenerationally to learn from you all. I'm Carol Houston from Peace Action of New York State and the Granny Peace Brigade. And why I'm here is because you give me the inspiration to keep going. Rocky, it, Rocky. Uh, we snaked around here. Um, Saptarshi, maybe, and then we can. Saptarshi, Syracuse, uh, Social Peace Council, and I'm here to hear what people have to say about uh, you and organizing. My name is Ted from Rochester. Um, I'm interested in creating a horizontal, direct action oriented militant, anti colonialist, multi racial, anti war movement. And I'm just Woo. curious how we do, do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm David from Syracuse. Uh, I just know that we see what goes on. I'm Bianca, I'm from Vancouver, British Columbia, but I live in Brooklyn, and I'm writing my PhD thesis on drone warfare, so I'm here to learn. Home of the Winter Olympic Games. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I'm Jim Anderson, I'm from Buffalo, I'm with Western New York Peace Center, but I'm the president of Peace Action New York State, and I'm here to yeah. listen, to share, to learn, and, and I know that another world is possible, and I know it must be us that makes it. So I'm rolling up my sleeves. Hi, I'm Brian. I live in Albany. I teach peace studies at Berkshire Community College in Field Mass. I'm an Army vet as well, um, and I'd be interested in hearing ideas of how to engage my students more in activism. I'm Hamad from Yemen. I'm here to run and share. Uh, I'm Nick from Syracuse, and I'd like to discuss how to get more youth involved. 
I'm Dave from the Bill of Rights Defense Committee, and I'm interested in making, well, movements in general more representative of all the states. I think we have a part of that. Uh, I'm Leila, originally from Iran, but um, I'm from Albany, from Albany, and I'm with Fellowship of Reconciliation, and I'm here because I'm young, and I want to know <laughs> what the young people are interested in. How can we be more involved? My name is Nathaniel. I live in New York City um, with the Fellowship of Reconciliation as well. I want to be sure that we uh, do my part so that we take the torch and build momentum and make sure the peace movement evolves through the generations. Did she want to go in the back? I'm Casey, I live in Syracuse. And I'm Maria, I live in Syracuse. I'm just here to learn about organizing. We're with the Jesuit Volunteer Corps. I'm Mark, I'm from New Jersey. I'm Gabe, I'm from Melton College. I'm John, I'm also from Melton College. I just want to figure out new ways that we can really get I'm Joe Scary from Chicago, and I am here because we've heard about this awesome New York peace movement. So I'm here to see, <coughs> learn, and take inspiration back to everybody there in Chicago. Oh, uh, I'm Pat McCormick. I'm the Vice President of Peace Action Geneseo. I'm here to network. I really want us to get involved with groups outside of Geneseo and really build a larger New York State network for peace. All right. Thank you all. Could we sit in a circle and start? Um, <laughs> we're going we're gonna to talk just for another minute and then have everybody work in small groups, actually, and then we'll come back to a big circle. So um, <laughs> we could get more circle-like with less uh, layers um, as we come back and present out, I hope, uh, as, as far as the space allows, anyway. Uh, so what we wanted to do is talk just a little bit about a couple of things that we've been working on with um, at high schools and at universities and with young people in uh, central New York. Uh, and one of the things that we did is we held a workshop very similar to what we're doing in here, uh, introduced ourselves, talked about our stories and why we're here, um, broke into small groups, came up with action ideas, and then practice some of those action ideas. And we'll talk just really briefly about that, um, sort of to get uh, everybody's mind working and some ideas out there before we break into small groups and hear from all of you. Uh, so I think that um, Brian, Rachel, and Amelia at least all have something to share. And then I think Claire and I can, can jump in and add things. Um, sharing just actions and different things that we've done, programs we've worked on. Okay, I guess I'll talk about two actions. So one was a protest against the CIA recruitment session at Syracuse University. Another was a sit-in at the Army ROTC space uh, on campus at Syracuse University. Um, so the first one, the CIA actions, kind of, you uh, um, can't really plan ahead for this too much because they usually are really late in announcing when they're gonna be having these sessions. Um, these will be announced through uh, university's employment things, like they send you out these emails saying, oh, here are places where you can get a job, blah, blah. So they're trying to recruit people up to say to the CIA. Um, so in 2009, I had participated in a similar protest at the University of Illinois, Urbana Champaign, where we actually got the session shut down, which was really inspiring. Um, I think that was because, I think uh, we were able to do that because we only had about 15 people, but we had uh, independent media there, um, we had the, univers the university's uh, campus newspaper photographer, and the CIA was really, really paranoid about having their picture taken. Do I need it? Or? No. Can yes, people hear yes, us? Yes, the old lady. Uh, use your card voice. So I'm open. My what? Use your card voice. Use your card voice. Up to you. Does this work? Any better? Uh, a little loud. Loud. All right, any better now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Okay, so with the CIA protest, um, when we got it shut down, we only had about 15 people. Um, and we had the media there, and I think that was uh, really helpful. Immedi as soon as we got there, uh, they called the campus police on us uh, to not have us there. Um, so it's good that we had a little form giving the university's policy on indoor protests. So if you're planning on doing this sort of action, that would be a good thing to have. Uh, when we did this at Syracuse University, they did not even call the campus police, which was really surprising. to just let us have a protest indoors uh, unannounced. Um, but we only had four people at that time, which was not very good. And we didn't get that much of that. And then the one for the ROTC, this was something that came out of the, the youth organizing meeting that we had. Um, so basically what we did was we planned on having a work-in where you just go and take your classwork or um, your grading if you're a grad student and just have and do this sort of thing in the Army RTC space on campus. Um, and the point was to convey that this should be a space for learning, not for training imperialist people. Um, and again, the campus police didn't show up at all in the Army RTC and just let us in. They just said, okay, go ahead. Uh, and Ben actually got to talk to a few of the cadets there for an extended period of time. So you want to talk about that experience? Yeah. So, um, so one thing that I thought was really important about this, and one reason that we got a number of especially graduate students out to the, um, the ROTC work-in, is what we called it, uh, was because there's a linked issue of not having space for graduate students, especially those who are teachers at the university, to have office spaces. And so um, folks in the philosophy department and the English department were sharing tiny offices among 13 people, and they had those spaces to meet with students and to do all sorts of other productive work, productive intellectual work. Um, but at the same time, the ROTC on campus has two big rooms that have leather couches and flat screen TVs and tons of computers, all sorts of space for the ROTC cadets to hang out. Um, and we just wanted to identify this uh, conflict, I think, of the university's mission statement to put all, all sorts of resources into militarism and war and not into the education of their students um, and into supporting the uh, graduate students who work as temporary labor and don't get paid very well. So I think that it was important in this case to work across different struggles and that that, that helped us out in doing this organizing. Um, but one thing about having conversations with cadets then, which is what that turned into, was there were cadets in there and we just started having conversations with them. And I think the, the first thing that we realized is that the cadets there are not, the, are not our enemy, they're not people that we are against. They're, um, in many cases, we found out um, students who had no other way to really pay for uh, college. And so they're very much um, on our side in a way, uh, uh, sympathetic to, or at least very open to our ideas and to talking to us. Um, and so uh, that was an important moment, I think, for all of us to kind of learn and to reach out and to not be afraid of one another, the cadets of the peace movement or the peace movement of the cadets, and to actually find places where our interests connect and, and to, to actually have that kind of, kind of conversation with them was really important. Um, so we've got a couple of other things to talk about, too, with drones and counter-recruitment um, before we split up into groups. Uh, so yeah, as part of our youth and, uh, anti-militarism and war group, um, I kind of came up with the idea to do the drone country tour, which I mentioned a little, a little bit in there. Um, and the basic idea is that um, it was in theme with the wine country tour, um, hoping that hoping to attract youth, um, maybe with alcohol, but also um, <laughs> yeah, it was intergenerational. We we um, borrowed a, a van from the local community center and. Um, actually toured through Syracuse, um, the, drone, the, uh, the drone industrial complex here. Okay, well I'm going to talk about two things. Um, first thing I'm going to talk about is a little action that we did out of this youth anti-war group that, that Ben and the others have been talking about. Um, one of our first actions was to uh, go to the state fair while it was going on. The, the um, Air Force had a booth there where they had a like simulated drone cockpit inside, and they had models of their drones out front, and it was all very, you know, pro-militarist. And and I think 
it even there was even some sort of language about you know your adventure or whatever. Come come see the I don't, I don't remember how, that, how they how they pitch it, but to make you know warfare sound really exciting and adventurous. So we um, made some stencils, uh, found some white T-shirts and spray painted um, on them that was with things that said you know ground the drones in the wars, killing is not an adventure. Um, I think we had one that was that had some pictures on it. Um, and we wore them into the state fair, which of course is a private uh, enterprise, you know, we, we don't have the right to protest there. Um, and went into the booth and kind of looked around and um, we had one of our people go into the simulation cockpit um, and a few of our brave folks, including Claire, um, spoke to the uh, Army personnel, until, basically until they kicked us out uh, because we were wearing shirts that were against drones. But um, I mean, we, we tried to challenge them and they tried to challenge us and it was, it was a good short moment of dialogue. Um, the other thing that I'm gonna talk about really briefly is uh, the Syracuse Peace Council's counter recruitment work, uh, which is obviously very important youth related work. Um, we, for I don't know how many years now, maybe six or seven, uh, have have been in the practice of going into each of the four city high schools and well, once a month, because that's how, how much we can uh, handle, and offering counter-recruitment materials, um, opt-out forms so that students can um, save their, you know, prevent their contact information from being shared with recruiters, um, and also just, you know, trying to uh, present a, a paradigm in which uh, going into the military hopefully is not the only option for these people to have to have f fulfilling lives if that's possible. So um, it's challenging work because of that we can't we we aren't you know we can't change the system that these young people are up against by being in the schools, but we can at least uh, make them aware of other possibilities. So, so here you go. I'm going to talk briefly about um, a anti-drones action that we did last summer. Um, so me and other interns, Rachel, Gavin, and Joe, um, went downtown um, and distributed flyers, leaflets to people. Um, it was kind of dramatic because we had a Reaper costume and a model drone that um, Peter, he's a Peace Council activist and sculptor made. Um, so it's really impressive, uh, this drone. Um, and we were walking around distributing leaflets and what I think was really useful was just um, providing information to uh, residents of Syracuse about drones and what's going on in their own city, and a lot were just shocked and amazed. And um, so it was just really, I think it was very useful to do that, just walking around the city. Yeah, so, um, so you can probably see through these different ideas that uh, we've tried to be creative with um, different forms of doing anti-war and anti-militarism, um, education and uh, dialogue among different communities, and, both, and trying to really work at engaging new people and trying out creative ideas. And so I'm hoping that together all of us can um, work on similar creative ideas, thinking about new ways of engaging people that maybe we haven't thought about in the past. And so the hope is to put you all into groups maybe of four and five would be nice. Um, it would also be nice if we circulated groups so that say if there's um, five people here from Hamilton, hopefully you f find your ways into different groups to talk. Um, because when you go back, of course you'll be able to talk amongst yourselves about work that you want to do together. Um, and we have a couple of questions that we hope guide this work. We're planning on about 20 minutes. Um, the overarching question being how to engage with youth, young people, in doing this anti-war work. Um, uh, specifically, people could share about what has worked locally for them, or what opportunities and resources are available to them. And of course, opportunities and resources, this can be anything, even if it's just um, energy, connections, networks. Um, working with other movements or uh, campus movements or local movements. Um, and then we could also talk about, share some of the challenges, but I'm hoping that we focus more on the opportunities instead of the challenges, although um, I don't think you should just limit your discussion to that. And then hoping that, okay, yeah. Um, and then hoping that 
maybe we find one person from each group who can share out about what you talked about, and that will be the last 20 to 25 minutes of this, is hearing from the different groups and having some larger group discussion about ideas that come out. So, um, and I think specifically we'd like to hear about what types of actions, tactics, strategies, or best practices you all talked about for engaging young people in anti-war work. Yes, well, our group, uh, you know, uh, Group Del Cinco, um, group number five, suggested that um, you know, we all discussed, you know, better ways of, uh, of uh, garnering uh, students' attention, you know, and to how to better effectively reach out to them, you know, talking with them and, and to them and rather than at them. And uh, I was, we pretty much uh, suggested, you know, getting together with the uh, student uh, club leaders, you know, and individually on one-on-one -on -one face face-to-face basis and dis discussing over dinner, you know, what we're about, and kind of like make us accessible, you know, and have the various organizations, you know, see what we're about, you know, and actually have their questions answered and have like a good back and forth, you know, over lunch or dinner or tea or drinking fountain or what have you. And, um, you know, I just, uh, you know, whet their interest in, and uh, have them in turn go back, you know, to the lar their larger groups, you know, and say, hey, let's go check this out, you know, let's make it more exciting. Rather than being didactic, you know, and being lecturing because they go, they hear lectures all day. The last thing they want to do is uh, trek out to a peace meeting and hear more lectures. And to just make events more exciting and accessible and say, hey, this is the, this is the end spot, you know, this is where the place to be. Thank you. Some of the things our group talked about was um, uh, sort of how to lure people in. Uh, you guys touched on that, but to use um, to use food and maybe even alcohol to as sort of an enticement to get people to come together and discuss things in a social setting. Because um, while so social media is effective, it can also be impersonal and it won't stick with people as well as a um, actual interaction with a human being. Um, and some other things we were um, thinking about, is, and this is maybe a little more on the negative side, but um, it's something to try to watch out for, is that my generation has m more ways to distract itself than I think any other generation previous. And um, in earlier, we, we saw pictures of um, uh, people who did um, Staged a, a drone protest, and they had uh, dead bodies, you know, fake dead bodies lying outside. It was very powerful, and I'm sure it was it affected people when they saw it. But it, it, th these, you know, this will affect people from my generation. But in in 15 minutes, we we can maybe forget about it. I mean, there's so many different ways we have to distract ourselves, and I think that's a a, a way that social media can help. That we could. Um, make it so certain problems are almost inescapable. Um, and everywhere one looks, you're still kind of um, confronted with them. And, uh, oh, 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 over here. <laughs> um, and uh, a, a, a last thing we were talking about was um, organizations also providing guidelines for how to do things. Like, um, this is how to lobby for something. This would be how to stage a protest. Um, these are things you can do that are legal and aren't legal. This is how far you can push the law. I think those are all um, very important. Thank you.
Uh, hi, um, I'm Mike, and so there were, I guess, so we talked a, a lot of things, but um, so the two that I'll, I'll talk about was um, one, this idea of, um, you know, drawing the connections between all of the different issues, because we all know that militarism isn't just, isn't just mis uh, militarism, it's also the same thing that brings us the austerity measures, it's the same thing that brings us um, racism, it's the same thing that brings us, you know, a lot of a lot of ills in our society are really closely tied to um, the military industrial complex. And so that by doing that and casting the wide net, you get a lot of people and you can bring them together. Um, and so, so then the other thing that we had also talked about, other than just talking about the politics of empire, is making it uh, interesting and making it unique and being creative in the ways that you engage with the public. And one thing that my friend Nick had talked about was uh, they, do, they do theater on, that's a play that's like closely tied to an issue uh, here, here in Syracuse. And so they'll, they'll do this performance and the audience comes and they're amused and they're sad and everything that comes with the theater. And then at the end of it, they have this facilitated discussion about the issue, and we had talked about that there is an actual play uh, that touches on drones. It's like a four-person play that can be performed and things like that. Um, so just that sort of like creative engagement with the public to draw people in and make them a part of the movement. Thank you. Two, we came up with a couple things. Um, I guess to, to break it down, one would be um, tools, ideas, and then the other would be um, how to how to act. I guess that's what I'll call it. So the tool, some of the tools that we came up with, um, pretty like basic things. Um, something I've I had a lot of fun with doing is using coloring pages when I'm tabling for different organizations. A lot of us do a lot of tabling, right, at different things. You can have your regular table, but then you can set up like a small card table with a fun um, tablecloth on it, and you can print out coloring pages. And not just about, you know, things like nutrition and healthy things that like is helpful to talk about with kids, but you can get like coloring pages, like, like radical coloring pages on like Malcolm X and oppression and Occupy Wall Street. There's some interesting things out there. Friends might have I've seen these things. So <laughs> find like ways to, have like rad radical education and like radical history, you know, getting the word out in like ways that are kind of interesting to kids. So that's one thing. Also, um, a march of, march of what was it called? Um, Children's Peace March um, was successful in Buffalo. Um, so all different things. Um, also, using um, using um, a lot of the, other groups have mentioned these things, but some other things are like using comedy, poetry, spoken word, um, kind of entertainment to get the music, uh, get the word out. Um, and then also in terms of like how to act, um, Dave here was um, offered some interesting things to think about um, when we're in groups and when we're trying to work together with the different uh, organizations that we're perhaps going to hold an event with or work with. Um, think about. You want to check your own privilege and the space that the space that you are taking up in the room, and so that can sound kind of abstract. So a specific, some specifics on that are to ask yourself things like, "Am I showing humility? Am I building trust?" And if you can't say that you're showing humility and that you're building trust, then you could very well be um, repelling the folks in the room that you're trying to build a coalition with. Does that make sense? Um, also thinking about, ask yourself before you speak, does this need to be said? Does this need to be said now? Does this need to be said now by me? Does this need to be said now by me to everyone? So think about these things. So I think that's it. Thank you. Hello, I'm Mark. 
So our group decided to focus on specifically how to personalize the issue because we thought by personalizing it we'd be able to get youth to, youth to be more involved in the process of opposing drone strikes and opposing basically the military industrial complex. Um, two specific things we focused on in terms of personalizing was just the sort of object tragedy of what goes on in the Middle East and we talked specifically about how we would do this is through dialogue because you can ignore a speech and you can ignore some kid with a ponytail standing on the stage but if you have a discussion with someone going back and forth and you're not talking you're not listening to someone you're going back and forth you, I'm asking you questions you're responding you're thinking that conversation stays with you because that conversation engages you fully then we also talked about how beyond just like the tragedy of just like what one name should mean to every one of us. Everyone think of the name that means most to you, your mother, your wife, your husband, your best friend. And then just imagine that like, in every day in the Middle East, some bomb goes off made by the United States Army that takes away six of those names for six different people or 12 different people or however many people. Uh, then we also talked about, on another note, just like personalizing it for students in the United States because all that money that we go to spend on defense spending could be spent subsidizing education like they do in the United Kingdom, or spent on making sure that your grandmother is able to afford that health care insurance that she probably won't be able to afford at this point. So personalizing it, personalizing the conversation, engaging in discussion instead of lectures, especially when you're trying to approach the youths. And am I forgetting anything, anyone? Right, let's get it. If you're in an older generation, get, having saying to one person, taking them aside and saying, hey, you, know, you clearly care about this, let me set you up with some connection, it puts an onus on them to feel like they should because they've been singled out and made to feel special. And I think that's something anyone can do. One teacher at Hamilton who just has discussion classes, every class who talks about anything that the students want to talk about is responsible for four students being here, is responsible for an independent study group studying basically how to get students active. One teacher, one adult who engages you, engages in discussion, respects your ideas, gets you talking, can have a profound impact. Thank you very much. Uh, so we had a, a couple of thoughts, one, we have an email list here if, if folks want to start sharing across uh, different communities and uh, cities. So the, I think that we all have lots of resources and ideas to share, so there, maybe we could set up something with this um, and we'd encourage any ideas. Um, and uh, we thought no one has kicked us out of the space yet. It seems like other people are still hanging out in their spaces, so we could either have sort of informal discussion or maybe we could have a couple of responses or comments about where should we go right now, the people in this room. So um, I'd be open to that if, uh, if other people, people want to speak at all. Um, and if not, then we could informally talk about um, uh, amongst ourselves. Here's one thing, somebody mentioned it as far as one thing to get youngsters there, like alcohol or something like that. I, I totally disagree with that. Okay. Most that was just human vision. In my entire life, the amount of alcohol I've consumed is In my, I'll be 79 years old in October. And in my entire life, the amount of alcohol I've consumed, some people drink more than a few weeks or a few months. I stopped smoking in 1958. But I've exercised regularly for 42 years. That's one of the things you should to the youngsters. And it shows. I had an idea. <laughs> what if we uh, organized a youth and peace conference or convergence in the fall or sometime soon? And it would be called like Youth and Peace Building Movement or How to Build a Movement. Yeah! The Geneseo Peace Action Chapter talked about that as well. And uh, so I'm going to do some research about fundraising for that, uh, like grant writing and stuff. So we'll be in touch with that. Yeah, I would suggest. Oh.
Yeah, one suggestion I would like to have is like have the uh, Occupy Syracuse and um, other Occupy groups throughout New York State to have like a writers group, you know, to organize like a writing writers project, you know, and compile them, you know, poems, short stories, you know, piece related, you know, travel related, you know, you know, chronicling your travels overseas and your experiences, and you know, just to celebrate the multicultural diversity of our of our world community and and to celebrate and to and to basically to um, basically to foster writing you know and creative expression amongst not just our youth but people of all ages you know even even 79 year olds and um, and I know in our society, you know, creative, creativism, you know, and as an endeavor and love of life is frowned upon and, and uh, smirked at while just making profit, you know, is encouraged and heavily emphasized. And the, the uh, assemblage, the collection of, of material wealth, you know, is, uh, and, and, and um, College students today, more than ever, you know, are are kind of like under that pressure. You know, they have to get this degree, they have to work hard, they have to pay off the student debt, and to attain some probably some uh, cushy position job that, that probably doesn't even exist unless you relate to someone or know someone. But uh, but but, but um, back to my point, I strongly uh, would suggest and encourage you know a writers uh, group. You know, you know, we could get together and trade ideas and bounce ideas off each other's head. I'm gonna shut up now. Thank you. Hi everyone. My name is Ursula, and uh, right over there, that's my housemate Nick. Hi Nick. <laughs> <laughs> we live at the Bread and Roses Collective House in the West Pot Nation neighborhood, and we're. Thinking about we're like 80 percent, 90 percent sure if folks want to have a little evening get together kind of thing that we would be happy to host. So um, our address is 162 Cambridge Street, <laughs> and I'll be here for the event this evening. It's going to be from about 7 to 9, 9:30. I think it's scheduled. It's going to be really great. So it wouldn't be until after that for a little bit. But I hope you'll all come back for the evening's program because it's going to be really fun with great music, and then maybe we can all keep talking and strategizing and getting to know each other. That's it. Alright. Uh, I have a final proposal, which is maybe that we do the um, ground the drones at the war train again and bring down militarism right here, right now. Does anybody want to join in that train? Oh, Don, you want to, you want to comment first? Okay. Hi, I'm Don. I'm, I'm, I'm an old guy. I'm not quite as old as this guy, but I also engage in daily exercise. Right after this, I'm going out for a run. Um, one, issue, one topic that didn't come up, uh, but it was one of, the, one of the workshops, was the role of spirituality. And that is um, another way to engage young people. I think, I hope, I pray. <laughs> okay, so there is, among all religions, the basic premise that thou shalt not kill, right? And that's universal. And that's um, something that I think we can engage people of all across many faiths, okay? Even non-believers. <laughs> Okay, can we do the train then? Yeah, let's do the train. Okay, let's do the train. Anybody want to, yeah, all aboard. Uh, who wants to come on? <laughs> We have to get the fight for the peace, we the belly
of the peace when this war's might cease, be peace. Like warm grass and bare feet, be peace. Like no iron bars and concrete, be peace. Like a nap beneath the shade tree, be peace. For me and the beach, keep these, you be peace. And every day could be hugs, kittens, and apple juice. Israel and Palestine could call it truth. And we could love the Muslims and Jews and report it on the news, you no longer have to choose. One or another of your brothers, not a hater of the haters, I'm a lover of the lovers. Plenty more to life to discover, like every good boy does deserve a loving mother. Three, three two, three, two, one. If we could be peace, women could be safe on the streets and no bombs drop from 30,000 feet. And all children could have plenty to eat. Be peace, won't you be peace with me? Be peace. And maybe we could all hug the trees and the birds and the bees could be top priorities. And the superstars could be the ones to cure disease. Be peace, won't you be peace, please?